Gateway Gamers podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Gateway Gamers. My name is Brian Marvel, joined as always by the great, the wonderful, the powerful, the mighty Ava- Avatar P. Avatar P, I'm one of the greatest the... nicknames you came up with. I'm not the cameo. I see you. I um, see you. Hello, all of our listeners out there. I am your co-host, your avatar, big fan, and uh, number one James Cameron fan. How, how are you? Uh, too, I love that joke just carried forever. <laughs> <laughs> going to. It's, it's I, going am, to. I am the way of water. So. The way. The way of RP. Um, so how are you, sir? We haven't really talked or seen each other since our big... Uh, yeah, I'm good, man. Uh, previous busy week. record a con. Uh, regrouping from the weekend. And I think everybody needed it. I don't know that house was possessed. Yeah. Um, uh, it was good. I saw Jacket Little Pill last night, and it was fantastic. Um, and that's the, the play based on Alanis Morissette songs. Um, I am not really. I liked the hits, but I'm not. I wouldn't mm-hmm. consider myself an Alanis Morissette fan. Never listened to the soundtrack. Um, I'd heard great things uh, from people that went and saw the show in New York and came to Philly, so we went. Um. Not only was it awesome, but I paid for obstructed view mm-hmm. seats, so they were like dirt cheap, and there was like nobody around us um, in the family circle section, like at all. So we literally just moved over and had a great view for the price that we paid, which was thirty dollars a ticket, and the seats we moved into were like ninety. That um, awesome. There was there was nobody. It was so weird, um, but the show was fantastic, and I. I was talking with uh, former producer Audra, and I I think that's probably the best show I've seen. Not really? Um, wow. Yeah, I, re- I really liked it. I thought it was really good, a really grounded, uh, heavy story, but uh, very, very good. Hmm. Um, other than that, just trying to kind of bounce back from the weekend. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just I think... kind of get back to life. <laughs> I think How everyone you? in the house was. So for, for those of you who don't know... Th- Everybody was not only was everybody on a different schedule last week, this previously recorded weekend. Yeah. Somebody at one point or time, everybody was not feeling well. I wasn't feeling well Friday. I was tired. Then uh, Brian during Friday night and some of Saturday wasn't feeling well. Mm -hmm. And then Shanks wasn't feeling well on Sunday. Nick was possessed by a demon uh, Saturday after drinking a four loco. And then Bob, who is a night owl state went to bed at like, 10 o'clock yeah. in the middle of watching Jackass Forever. It was it so, was the earliest I've ever seen him sleep. <laughs> and it was like everybody was just on different schedules. Uh, Shane and I were really the only ones Saturday night that kind of stayed up. And even mm-hmm. that, it was just, it was a very different weekend this year, which I think to a degree was better for some of us because like I was really recuperating, re, like recuperating for a while last year. Mm-hmm. But I, I, it was still a great time. We still had a lot of fun. But um, how are you feeling? Are you feeling better? much better for uh for those who don't know uh we got together with the other members of the previously recorded network uh it's some, this is our second annual and we just escaped to the dry town of ocean city <laughs> off season so we get a nice cheap house and uh just play games and drink and just escape for the weekend and kind of come up with ideas for the upcoming year for your show previously recorded for our show the gateway gamers uh we kind of collaborate um, I caught Nick up with production now that Audra's fired and Nick is our new producer and editor. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just a cluster F because we we're only there for like two nights, but we bring enough pizza and junk food as if we're there for two weeks and we <laughs> try to cook it all yeah, within those next, two days, pretty much. Yeah, next year for sure. We're, I'm bringing a salad. That's all, that's all I've eaten this week. Um, had enough pizza and mini corn dogs. And yeah, it was it was a rough. Like I got there Friday, and it was fine. And then like I think what I was a, I think by ten I wasn't feeling great. Kind of puked and rallied. Came back, stayed up till about two, and just watched them play Mario Kart and Mario Strikers. And mm-hmm. then I was like, I think I'm gonna wander a bit. Yeah, I. I you know, we got there, we played a game, um, and then Nick, producer Nick, threw on Avatar. I did not. And I kept emphasizing it was not me putting mm-hmm. it on. And um, I just wanted to sit down. I, I just wasn't – I didn't sleep well the week before. Yeah, you kind of came in a little out of it Friday night. You're the one who brought the, the ick. I'm yeah. blaming you. 
Yeah, so I, I I hadn't slept well the week before. I was kind of, I took off the week between Christmas and New Year's, and you know, with that, you stay up a little bit later, and and you know, kind of just kind of get back into my routine. I really wasn't sleeping at all, so mm-hmm. just going, you know, this is boring for people to listen to, but I was just really really tired. So I like I was playing chess, not checkers, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna sit here for a while. I'm gonna go, I played a couple games. I'm like, I'm gonna go to bed. Uh, a little bit earlier than everyone to hopefully have a full Saturday. And I felt mm-hmm. perfectly fine Saturday. I slept great through the night and I was perfectly fine. However, everybody else was not. I, I recovered, but then I think I've just, I was away from my family. It was an opportunity to get some sleep. So that's what I did. But uh, <laughs> enough about our sleep and illnesses. Yeah. This is a uh, podcast we, about games. Yeah, this is a podcast about board games. So let's get into it. Um, I brought... I want to say 25 games. We played four, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> which is I... per the usual. I think last year I brought 50. We played two, two. so we're getting there. Well, at least this year you didn't bore me to death with uh, a game. Betrayal, House in the Hill, yeah. But I think um, if I would if I get that third edition, I'm going to force you play it. No way, no way. Jose. Um, but we, we played. We started off with uh, Thanos Rising, as yeah. all my friends, all of our friends, love. Always a um, hit. Thanos Rising is great. Dice yeah. rolling cooperative game. And then we started off Saturday morning with uh, a six, three on three, six player game of Dice Throne. Yeah, as the Marvel talked, edition. As the the yeah, the Marvel edition that I that the one that I bought, not the one that we were sent. Um, and we've always wondered what it would be like to play with six people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it was too much. Um, we played for about an hour and a half. Yeah, I think it went better than I expected having. I would 100% agree. It went really well because we took turns. We just did teams. We did three on three, took turns attacking and whatnot, whatnot. But, you know, people got to learn a game and the game itself. If you want to make sure you're doing everything correctly Mm -hmm. and getting the most out of your roles. And, you know, it was cool to see like Shane get really into it. And Nick's played. So he he really likes it. Um, Shane could care less. But well, he um, barely got the play, <laughs> to he, be fair. That, that too. And then he was just like, I just want to sit down. They were up till really late. But uh, I think I prefer a smaller group. Um, I really enjoy one on one. Yeah. Um, and even two on two wasn't bad. But I think for me personally, three on three was a little bit much. Yeah. I think, I think three on three was good being, I would say, everyone except for you and I is pretty well versed in the game. But they caught on quick, and toward the end, it started going really smoothly. Um, our goal of just attacking one person on your team at a time really worked, where I was just like, "Just let's just knock Nick out, and then just yeah. knock one other person out. Knock. So, Poor Nick, too. He's, he really wanted to play. Yeah, I feel bad, but it was strategy. Sorry, can't edit this out. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I think overall, I it went better than I thought, but I definitely think one-on-one is just my favorite way to play that game because yep. it just it makes it quick it's just a quick one-on-one little skirmish type dice game and then you move on to something else agreed i don't enjoy overly long games or waiting a long time for my turn mm-hmm. either i think it, it draw it takes me out of it a little bit and um, i was getting distracted not really paying attention because of that aspect of yeah. it you know it's an aspect of my personality um and so i think that's why i enjoy the one-on-one a lot more mm-hmm um then we played secret hitler great game great game. yeah i mean there's we've, we've was... talked about the flaws of that game and within the group uh we only played six players which is yeah. fine that game that's a it's... 10 player game yeah and i also think that's the first game we've ever played together if i remember correctly at the comic shop back in the day yeah when i first yeah. met you I first yeah met you. yeah i think um... uh it's it's a good game it just it needs a you few need, elements. You need a, a a lot of people. It helps you the wild card element that we play with. Mm. Um, we used to play with we used to play with ten people, and it was awesome. Yeah. Um, and playing with six, it was still fun, but um, it's easy to I, figure I mean, out. It, it was it though, because I think for most of them, we were confused. About, well, I because, mean, you were the villain too. Yeah, but, and I also played we it confused. wild. Yeah, and that that makes the game a little bit better. And when, mm. we, when we're in these smaller groups, it makes it a lot more fun. Yeah, when we played but at a uh, for my bachelor encourage. party, yeah, we played at my bachelor party. We had ten people. That was probably the most fun I had with that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was awesome. 
highly encourage if you guys play this game to play wild. So for example, Brian was Hitler. And so he was doing things that a uh, fascist would do and instead of what he was supposed to do. And it, mm-hmm. it just, it, it brings a wild card element. And so people didn't know what to think of Brian, whether he was playing it true or not. Yeah. Um, and it, it's just it's fun. So if you guys have ever played that game, maybe we'll cover it one time on here, but probably not. I, uh, I recommend there's better ones. Like I love the production of that game. Cause it's, it's nice looking and it's a good, it's a good one to introduce cause it's simple, mm-hmm. but there's better ones out there. Um, werewolf yeah, is a better werewolf. version with more characters and powers um they have a marvel version of hail hydra which mm-hmm. is a better version it has like an element of a yeah, little bit of a wild also, to it you brought down we just didn't get to it yeah we didn't get to play that um but secret Hitler's good like it's, it's not my favorite of the social deductions but it's a good one to bring out for people to don't play those type of games because there's no real bells or whistles to it. Yeah. But there's better ones. But um, the other game we played that I was wildly disappointed by, uh, Hand to Hand Wombat. Mm-hmm. Very so disappointed this, by that game. I sat this one out. I was the, you know, due to the amount of tea, I needed to sit out mm-hmm. and, I, and I needed to like watch, make sure nobody cheated, but it didn't look that fun. Yeah, I just... inserted myself as a wild card element and just turned the box <laughs> on you. Um, but if you want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so Hand to Hand Wombat we talked about when it was on Kickstarter. Um, it's a very much almost like a social deduction game where you are covering your hand, your eyes with your hand and you and everyone else is trying to build towers in the box, the game box itself. Uh, but one of the wombats is bad. There's one bad wombat. Everyone else is a normal wombat. And then there's like an indecisive wombat who plays good until he turns bad when the bad guy's winning, which is whatever. Um, <clears throat> the scoring is way skewed toward a bad guy. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, if you only complete one tower out of the three, the bad guy gets a point. Where it's hard to even complete one. And if you yeah, don't complete it, any, the bad guy gets two points. And this is like a, th- I think only a three point game. It's, I, it, I think the scoring would have to be like house ruled a bit. I'm curious. I'm going to look into this more and see like what other people are saying about it. But it just, it was hard. Like it was hard to kind of fiddle around and communicate and build a tower with, uh, with someone destroying it as well. Because I think you only have like a minute and a half. Yeah, it wasn't a lot of time. The, yeah, so the, the the thing I would have probably attempted if it's inside the rules was probably try and get all of my pieces outside the box and then put them on. Maybe that's how you would do it. I don't know. I guess I, I didn't get to play, but um, yeah, I think it, everything has I, to stay inside the box. The box um, isn't that big. No, it's um, not. It's it's a very small box for the amount of people that hands that have to be yeah, in it. And once you go up to six done. players, we played four. Yeah, it, I... yeah, it's too much chaos. I, I get like the production. I think the pieces themselves are nice. Like they have ridges with like dots on them, like almost like Braille. So you know what piece is the bottom because it's five. The next piece is four. So like that made it easy, but it was hard to communicate and kind of be blinded and having someone else mess it up at the same time. Um, I played as the bad guy the one round. And even then it was like, it wasn't easy. Like Shane had a really good uh, idea where he built a tower that just put his hand on top, so I couldn't mess it up. Where he's like, "I'm I'm done. I can't help you anymore." Like it was, <laughs> it was a good idea, but it was just like, all right. Like I guess. Yeah, I sat it out, and I didn't care that I sat it out. Yeah, I'm curious to like play it more, and then maybe house ruled a bit more to make maybe it a little more on even. One. Maybe one on one or two on two, whatever. But no, we did two on two. Maybe one on one. It's better. Mm, yeah it's it's three to six players but um yeah so that was kind of disappointing i i was excited for that one and just a little let down um and then we played throw throw burrito throw, throw burrito a, a classic. classic yep a lot of fun we talked about it last year yeah it's a big big hit in uh our friend group and in the, in the previously recorded network um and it was yeah. awesome dude we, we there were so many laughs uh, brian was on the floor 
so much for no, really no reason at all. He just, I was every trying time to dodge. Looked, every time you looked over, that's where he was just laying on the floor. I was, that was um, my strategy. As soon as, <laughs> as soon as the card came out, I would just dive on the ground and then get just hit immediately. But Shane mm-hmm. and I had an epic yes. multi-room. I was literally hiding in the shower, <laughs> like epic duel through the house. So we we the house we rented. If if you guys are familiar with Ocean City, uh, or or any shore house really, mm-hmm. uh, but these like two floor condo houses kind of things. A lot of them have like sh- like narrow hallways. Yeah, that lead in with many doors. So Brian and Shane were hopping in between, uh, those doors and it playing throw throw burrito. Mm-hmm. Very entertaining to watch. Yeah, that's that's definitely a game. If you like party games and more physical games, and you don't have anything nice in your house that's breakable <laughs> definitely look at throw throw burrito um i introduced it to my wife's family my in-laws and they loved it like people that aren't gamers and they just they loved it yeah it's so much because it's you get to chuck something yeah, at somebody yep. it's fun it's not thinking it's just you're constantly moving there's yeah. no downtime nope um so it's just a, it's a it's a hit it's, it's always a good time and uh we all love it and that was the last game we played right yeah, that oh, was kind no. of it. We played Bob bought some pub trivia game. We played That's right, that, yeah. Um, which was, was a literally good called trivia pub game. trivia. <laughs> yeah, and he said it, it on the box it says it was uh on Kickstarter. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was decent. It was like a no there was a, a trivia ton of game. stuff. You know, we we played for a half hour and we went mm-hmm. through like three cards, and there's like it looked like three hundred cards in the box. Yeah. Um so that was uh and then that was the last one, and I think everybody started to die. Um, yeah, and then we played we... Mario Kart and Mario yeah, Strikers and relax stuff, and uh, jot it down some ideas. Um, that, yeah, uh, no, we have some great future, ideas to come we'll, up we'll coming out. up in the future, especially summer. We have another great idea kind of ramped up. Um, looking forward to the new year. One of the things in the new year just announced today, mm, yes, that uh, I'm kind of chomping at the bit for. I feel like you're kind of ho-hum our friend preston's kind of ho-hum and it is the next uh marvel united expansion officially coming to kickstarter yeah so uh, i am a little ho-hum on it um the box that was released today i thought was pretty cool Mm -hmm. um if it allows me to buy the fantastic four box i would be interested but i did see i was on there i was on simon's website and they had the cosmic ghost rider um on the bike and they had the baby thanos yeah on his chest. To him. and i was yeah. like that would be awesome but the figure doesn't have that and i think if the figure did have that i would get it just for that reason. it doesn't no the, the figure is just him standing up oh because a lot of the artwork shows it made us a card artwork yeah maybe and then the, gotcha. there's some new elements today of that um i'm curious to see what comes with it because they always do like 10 boxes per launch yeah. um but the multiverse eh, i don't know unless there's like and they announced it also like the Spider Geddon box, which didn't interest me really at all. Yeah, so so far they announced the main core box of the new set. Um, the theme is multiverse, so it's uh, Captain Carter, Spider Man two thousand ninety nine, Cosmic Shuri's Ghost Black... Rider, Loki. Shuri... Yeah, Loki and Shuri is Black Panther, and Jane Foster. Yeah, and then, and then a, a white doom. There's like a white cloak doom on like, a mortis the and a. Doctor oh, Doom, God Doom are God the bad Doom. guys. Yep, God Doom, that's it. So I think it's very cool, and we talked about it uh, our last episode that yeah. we thought that that's what they were going to do um, with the multiverse. I'm curious to see how much multiverse they do and what they do. However, yeah. their new mechanic of command mode, which allows you to play with all four as a solo mode, I thought was very, very cool. Okay, well, I read... <laughs> well, I know... The only thing I worry about is... Um... So the original Marvel United was very basic. It was good guys, bad guys. The the powers, they didn't seem too, like, individual, like, in a way. Mm-hmm. And then, like, X-Men came out, and they were, like, wildly, they felt like their characters. Like, they had a lot of powers, and they were they felt very different. This one, I'm worried it's going to be even more... Like just far yeah. far removed from the first one because now they have items like you have Captain right. Carter's shield, you have Ghost Rider's whip, and I guess you can equip them to the old heroes too. But it's just like I don't want them 
changing and adding too much that where these characters are like overpowered and that's always like a something you worry about with these type of things maybe they feel the need to continually upgrade instead of just releasing more boxes they gotta kind of put a driver on it yeah yeah so i'll if it comes to retail i'll get the main box um yeah well, i like all the characters that are with it yeah they announced the other box was as you said the spider get in i think uh which has it's just like a ton of spider-man yeah it was spider-man noir it was uh, who else is on uh, the cover Sp- spider gwen um, yeah just a different bunch of spider characters that haven't been in the game yet um and then the bad guy is Morlin, who's cool. Like that's a yeah. cool villain. And yeah, they said he's that from the Across the Spider Verse. Uh, yeah, book. he's gonna. That box is gonna be coming to retail. Mm-hmm. So the other box will eventually come to retail. This box, the Spider Man box, will eventually come to retail. But the big one they announced today is Galactus. Yep. And I kind of said I don't know if I'll back this one for everything but I'll probably get the Galactus figure. And I'm glad that the Galactus figure isn't like three feet tall, like the zombie side. <laughs> um, he looks as big as the box, maybe a little bit bigger than the Sentinels from okay. the other set that we'll yeah. talk about. So real quick to interrupt you, sure. the spider box, the spider get box is essentially into the spider verse. There's um, it is kind of cool. It's, Spider-Man Noir, um, Black Suit Spider-Man, the Spider-Man with the, like the robot from Across the Spider-Verse. Oh, or, uh, it's no, it's um, I'm looking at the picture now as well. That's Superior Spider-Man. The Doc one Doc. In, the, in the Venom suit? Oh, the oh. one behind it. Yeah, the one in the middle is. Yeah. Is, and then uh, Spot is the one of the bad guys yeah. along with Moreland. Um, yeah, then uh, Spider-Punk, who's cool. Spider-Punk, Silk. Silk. And uh, uh, Scarlet and then, Spider. Um, Scarlet Spider, I, I actually I poo pooed this box a little <laughs> bit. I might I might get it because I have the other Spider Man box. Yeah, if that comes if that's coming to retail when it drops like ten dollars on Amazon, I'll grab it because they will because all the other ones have dropped. Yes, I am. I will not buy it at release. I I don't want to say this game's not worth thirty dollars, mm-hmm. um, but you know it's gonna drop. But if it drops to like twenty, uh, mm-hmm. I can justify that. Um, yeah, yeah so... sorry, sorry to to derail a little bit. I want to no, 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 especially because I poo pooed it. Um, but yeah, though, uh, Galactus, man, you said you, you thought yeah. it was coming. I I think Galactus is going to be really cool. Um, he has the heralds with him, so it's uh, was a Firestar, and then the other three, <laughs> Terax. I don't know, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's that's cool because we we've kind of played the bigger boxes and they're cool whenever they add a new mechanic and Galactus looks like he just chills in the middle and turns. Like it almost looks like Thanos rising. Mm -hmm. Like he just kind of turns and whatever he's looking at gets attacked. Um, And we liked the different games. They kind of added. Like, I love the sinister six one. You haven't played it yet. Mm -hmm. I like the different mechanic of that one. I like the different mechanic of the infinity gauntlet one. Uh, the different mechanic of the Sentinel one, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. I like when they do different things like that, not necessarily completely changing the game. Completely yeah, completely, completely changing, changing the, game. the game. It's just a different mode you could play. Like, all right, like I want to do a harder mode today. Let's fight Galactus. Like, not right. too game changing. It's like I like that kind of stuff. But I'm I'm yeah. curious what they're going to add to this game. What characters are coming? That's what I mean. If they let off with that. Uh, well, you don't get much bigger than that. Like no pun intended with Galactus, yeah. but but you're gonna I, you're I, gonna see Throg. You're gonna see Gator Loki. Like you're gonna see those characters Kang? that are goofier. Is Kang, do you already have Kang? Uh, yeah, Kang was in the last set, but yeah, so there's like, I don't. But there's eight different versions of Kang. Yeah, true. So, true. but so that's that's something the, coming. Um, zom- zom- zombie box. The absolutely zombie a zombie box. box. Be, that's gonna be a Kickstarter exclusive. Yeah, we'll see. So that's what they're up to. Um, like I said, uh, if you read the title, we are going to be covering one of the boxes. We were very on the fence for a long time about covering these Kickstarter boxes because they weren't coming to retail. And then Simon changed their mind and brought all these to retail. And then even, like you said, with the Fantastic Four box, 
will probably be in the next Kickstarter. You could probably go back and buy some of the old ones like they did before. So we'll cover this game. If you like it, you might be able to get it in the Kickstarter. True. Um, or at but, retail. Yeah, I don't know if this one's coming to retail. I think this might uh, be a Kickstarter only. So retail boxes are, real quick, in case you guys are interested, the Deadpool box, X-Men the- Gold, X-Men Blue, Guardians, Tales of Asgard, and then uh, Black Panther. Yeah. Those are the additional boxes. And the Spider-Man one, under the Spider-Verse, uh, which is different from the one we were just talking about, um, that's been available for a little bit on Amazon. Yeah, so... Um, like I said, X-Men Days of Future Past is the expansion box we're going to be talking about today. Um, do you, are you, do you know the Days of the Future Past storyline for X-Men? I know you're, you're not, you're slightly younger than I am, so I don't know what your comic. I've read the comic, yeah. The, the Days of Future Past? Yep, I've read okay. the comic and I, I love the movie. Oh yeah, that's right, they kind of did a, a the kind movie's of different... Called... The movie's called Days of Future Past. Yeah, but it's, it's slightly different, but yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, Days of Future Past is a storyline where it's uh, one of the futures that could come to pass where mutants are basically enslaved and are enslaved by sentinels that have kind of taken over the world and anyone with the X gene is sent to like, prison camps or destroyed. Um, I forget how they come back to the past in the comic. I, I read it. I so I bought it mm. like when the movie came out, and you know how the old comics are. They're just yeah, they're, they're tough to read sometimes. Yeah, and it was just one issue, and there was two other issues in there, so it took me a while to get to it. So I don't really remember the comic too much, but the movie I'm very well versed in because it's yeah, the Shadow Cat movie. is the reason in the comic or in the movie. But anyway, so that's what this game's based off of. So obviously, when the last Kickstarter was happening. They announced this box. I remember I texted RP immediately. And I was like, I think they got me with this one. Mm-hmm. Um, it comes with three Sentinels. If you know what the Sentinels are, for X-Men, they're one of their biggest villains. They're literally giant robots. That's it. Just giant robots. And they're the fact that cool. they made them for this set is like super cool. And the fact that they're three different sculpts mm-hmm. is like awesome. Like uh, they look great on the board. Like they're so much bigger than the other pieces. Uh, they're in action poses. It looks like they're blasting, and yeah, it's very cool because they didn't get lazy with it. Like they didn't just do three no. sentinels; yeah. they did three individual. Which uh, to the set, these molds are always awesome. Yeah, um, as we kind of talked about before, uh, we're not really going to go over the rules of the game itself, Marvel United. This is just kind of covering the expansion. We do have two episodes pretty much at this point covering the basic gameplay of the Marvel United and the X-Men United. They're not wildly different, so you can go back and find that episode if you're more curious about how the game plays. Like I said, just going to kind of cover the expansion a bit. Um, So as I said, it comes with three Sentinels, and you can mix and match them in any set. It's not just for this game. Which I think you is cool because it's if you're fighting Red Skull and you're like, ah, Red Skull's kind of easy. Let's throw a Sentinel in there. That's one of the best parts of this game in a, as a whole. Is it's just the, mixing and matching. Mix and matching. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing with the Thanos set as well, kind of going off tangent. You don't have to have Thanos and his brother, his, uh, the secret, what is it, Cabal? What is it? That would be like the, uh, yeah. The, well, the, uh, what the heck are they? they... The Cabal? The Cabal? No. Like his his team? Yeah. They are do they the, have a name? Um, they do have a name. Um the, the Children of Thanos, we'll just call children them. Children of Thanos. Instead of having the, chi- the children. Yeah. Children instead of, of having children of Thanos, you can have four different villains. Like you could punch in Magneto, Red Skull. The Black Order. The that's Black Order, saying. that's their names. Um so again, I like that mix and match element. I like that you can mix and match Sentinels in any set. Um but I think my favorite part of this expansion is it's really hard. Yes. It was, <laughs> like, very, it was very difficult. It was very, very hard. I have not beaten it yet. We, You and I have only played the one time. I've tried to solo this a bunch of times, <laughs> and I can't figure it out. It's, t- it's tough, man. You so the, if, so the way that this one works is we read, we the first time we played, we ran out of cards. And mm-hmm. that is how the game ends. You don't reshuffle. It's one of the ways, yeah. And 
we didn't did I think we just got the third sentinel out or Nimrod just came out. So yeah. Nimrod isn't I'm not making fun of the guy. That's that's his name, Nimrod. There's three sentinels that are jumping around. You have to knock them out first. And then the main villain Nimrod comes out. And how poorly you did against the Sentinels is how strong he is. Mm-hmm. But you have to, what, what, what did we have to do first? We had to get the stars. Was it stars to clear? Yeah, so there's Before the five could, spots like, on the map. The usual were six. Was it six spots? I always forget that. I think there's, there's six, six spots on the map. There's six. So there's the six spots on the map. Each one has a card on it. Um, and there was like a Sentinel factory, a Sentinel like power grid and whatever. All we had to do was beat the Sentinels to advance. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we, we concentrated them. on everything else. Yeah, yeah, because we were so worried about the way that ours. So I was, uh, I was Wolverine. You were Professor, or you were Wolverine. I was Professor, or you were Logan. I should that say. Was Logan. I was Pro- Professor X, and we didn't have a lot of punch and jump cards. And if you were, if you ended the game in the same, like you round in the same spot as the Sentinel, it really hurt you. Mm-hmm. So we were jumping a lot, and we were not attacking. We were playing a little strategically. But I think too strategically, and that's yeah. what ended up caught, but biting us. Um, it's a, but they were very tough. I, I think I said to you, this is the hardest one we've played, and we, you know, we played, we played this game a handful of times. Yeah, yeah, I think this is definitely the hardest, they were the hardest to play, hardest expansion for sure. Um, so I'll kind of go over the Sentinels. Uh, depending on how many players you have, is how much health they have. Since it was just two of us, they only had five health, which is pretty easy. But their move protocol is what makes them interesting so normally uh after three movements from the heroes you draw a villain card the sentinels moved pretty much every time you moved yep um so each character has a specific sentinel that's kind of chasing them so rp has sentinel a i had sentinel b and when i would play a card sentinel b would activate and they read the last two cards in the line and that's how they move so that's the other part you have to be strategic about is how you play your cards are how the sentinels are moving and attacking and activating so it's really it's a neat communication where it's like all right i'm gonna play this card this sentinel's gonna activate jump here you're probably gonna get hurt yeah that's why it was like really it was just we really had to communicate a lot with this mm-hmm. more than I think ever before in the terms of the way the storyline would play. And we said to be so cautious about where yeah. we would finish because they would the Sentinels would be right there and they knock you down. Yeah, it was always us being like, I'm going to play his card. Is that OK? Yeah. Is that OK? Because <laughs> you knew it was going to happen next. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um. So when you would play the cards, as I said, it reads the last two cards and goes by the symbols on the cards. Um, if you don't know, there's like a jump symbol, a star symbol, which is like a power action, a, a punch attack card, and then like a wild card. Mm-hmm. So when we would play a movement card, the uh, Sentinel would read the movement card and it would move as well. So every time we kind of moved, it was just kind of chasing after us. Um, if it couldn't move anymore, if it was already on top of us, it would move Nimrod's plot track along so nimrod has like a track of like 15 if it gets up to 15 the game's over so we as you said you kind of had to be running you couldn't stay still for the star power action they would add what are civilians to a location Mm -hmm. not a big deal but if you can't in in this game the civilians and the like thugs were not really a concern especially because we didn't have to clear them like we normally do to attack yeah because we can, so they it really wasn't a factor in this game in terms of when that would happen to us. Yeah, the only thing with uh, if a if a location had too many civilians and they couldn't add more, Nimrod's tracker would go up. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah, but we were so on top of that again, focusing on these other things that you normally would in a normal game. We were missing what we were supposed to be doing. They read a fist. Then they deal damage to a hero in a location if they were with us. That one was kind of easy to dodge as long as they weren't jumping near us. But again, we were wasting time running from them. Yeah. And they were just chasing us. 
Um, and then wild card was the one that we were so focused on. If they did a wild card, they would heal as much as there were uh, the Sentinel productions on the map. Mm -hmm. So we, you and I were so focused on clearing those Sentinel yeah. productions so the they Sentinel couldn't production. heal. Yeah, and the Sentinel productions were just at the bottom of each card. Uh, at, the, at each bottom of each location, it would say Sentinel Okay, Sentinel yeah. Tracker or whatever the heck it's called. And we just had to use the power cards. Yeah, we were very worried about that. That's yeah. what we were we were worried about like everything else except for attacking like, them. And we but we didn't realize that till after the game. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, the character I had Logan was the most attackingest character I've ever seen in the game. Like I probably could have sliced. But we never had jumps. It was yeah. always the jumps we were missing. Yeah, we needed a like a Colossus to be fastball special me around the board <laughs> yeah but we were and then but we had plenty of wild cards we were just nervous nervous to use them mm -hmm. yeah so that's like, like that was cool like i liked the communication I, I liked the stress of this game like it felt like it should i should feel stressed out that these sentinels are chasing us around the map and i like yeah. that it wasn't random like normally with a villain it's a random card so you can't strategize too much where you're like all right i'm gonna go here juggernaut might hit me i don't yeah. know i like being like all right i'm gonna run here sentinel's gonna chase me here i need you to go here like we knew what was gonna happen mm -hmm. and it it didn't make it any less fun it made it more fun yeah like how no, stressful it was we were and i think we ended up playing for like an hour and it it didn't even feel like that because we were no. so we were so into it and and, um, it, and it was only an hour because we were so and communicating yeah. so much where it's like yeah. all right we gotta do this we gotta do this we gotta do this <laughs> yeah i i really enjoyed it i think the game did what and this is the side of the game that i haven't really seen where you said it's tough mm -hmm. you know i can't beat these things i can't do this i can't do that and i you know base boxes and the only other time i've ran into this is when i fought ronin and the ronin was i beat him on my very last turn um so but then failing and not you know, feeling the stress of mm. having to get this bill and done in a certain amount of time. And that's the really cool aspect of Marvel United that I, I like it's, it's not infinite. It's, you know, when you're out of cards, you're done. Yeah. And, and you can run out quick and you can run out quick. Just, it's like a fight in a comic book movie or a comic book. Like it doesn't go on forever. And um, some of these games can, if they allow you to reshuffle and, and whatnot. Yeah. And so I really, really enjoyed uh this version of the game well that was so that was part one <laughs> because after you defeat the sentinels nimrod comes out now if you and i would have cheated we also could have done more villains too or more characters too yeah we but we only if had two we figured out if you and i che would have cheated we might have been able to beat them so there's mm -hmm. an asterisk that we lost where uh <laughs> i think either logan or professor x can like gift tokens to somebody i'm pretty sure it was logan like would build up uh attacks that i could hold on to and nimrod came out and i remember i'm like i can oh, hit yeah. him yeah. <laughs> for like six one pop like as soon as this idiot comes out i could pop him for six damage with all these tokens but he has a <laughs> he has like a built-in thing where if he is reduced to four damage he teleports to the opposite side of the board. So I was like, even if I pop him, he's going to just teleport to the other side of the board. Yeah. I think you had one more card left. So mm -hmm. you would have just been able to do one action. And then I couldn't get to him in time to do anything. Yep. If he didn't teleport, we could have won. Yeah. And yep, absolutely. I, I agree. We could have cheated. Yeah. We're, we're good people. No, we, <laughs> I've cheated. Marvel United, I think it's the most, the game I've cheated at the most. Where I'm just like, for me, uh, Thanos, like whatever, Thanos come rising. on! Like, <laughs> <laughs> like Thanos I won. Horizons got it for me because uh, we were, but it was accidental. Yeah, um, but overall, like I, th I think this is one of my favorite boxes from the X Men Kickstarter. I know you're very partial to Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. I like the Fantastic Four, but it, at the end of the day, it's just another group of characters. I think what this expansion offers makes the whole the game as a whole much better much better because mm -hmm. you can plug in sentinels 
to characters that might be easy. Like I said, the Red Skull in box one is super easy. Plug in a Sentinel or two, make it a little bit more challenging. Um, and I, I like that aspect where you can plug and play and add difficulty or make old villains more interesting. It's a really cool element of the game. Yeah. So yeah, I, I really liked it too. Um, like I said, big fan of it. Uh, I, I'm I'm not very familiar with this with this expansion, like the expansions in this line for the X Men. Mm-hmm. It's one that really intrigued me uh, when the Kickstarter launched. Um, as somebody who was new to this game, uh, and you know, didn't really know too much about it, um, seeing those Sentinels was really exciting, and finally getting the opportunity to play it, and it paid off. It was a lot of fun, uh, and. I wish we won, but mm. I still enjoyed myself and I enjoyed this game and it just continues to show how much I enjoy this game in general. Yeah, I, I, this is a game that I'm always like, I need to get this out more. Mm-hmm. There's yeah, been so many times... So many, but you have so many boxes, dude. Yeah. I, <laughs> well, I think this is a great game. It's not a great solo game. Uh, yeah, it's more fun I like play. the communication. That was one of the things I remember we talked about in our other episode how much i liked the communication and playing solo you just don't get to communicate that was the other thing i read in the new kickstarter is they they they're making a true solo yeah you where you could play as one character not for oh, not controlling four characters you play as one character oh okay so I miss that okay. i am excited for that and i'm hoping that's awesome i'm hoping that's just a rule set i can integrate into these sets not like something i have to buy with the new set like some weird sure. cards like but yeah this is a gr- like I, I we talked about before we love this game great game um I, I enjoy playing this with you or other people more than playing a solo that's the only reason it doesn't come out more yeah i like playing this game with other people and my wife doesn't like it so really only get to play it with you uh yeah I actually played with my brother-in-law uh and he He's just so he just loves Thanos Rising so much. So anything mm. that's not that, but he he liked it, and I'm seeing him this weekend. So I think I might I might bring it with me. Well, if the Galactus expansion, like I said, it kind of looks like Thanos Rising. If it has the same mechanic, maybe that's the way to get him to play more. <laughs> yeah, well, I've got him to play this and Dice Throne, and he likes both. Yeah, but Dice Throne, still great game. just <laughs> Thanos Rising. Yeah. Um. So that's it. I give this game this. Ex- I give this expansion a plus. I yep. give the game an a plus. Um. Look out for the Kickstarter. I think it's coming January eighteenth. Yep. This gonna, might be one of the ones available. I'm going to keep my eyes on it. Um. Yeah. I would very much like to get that Fantastic Four box. Um. Just on my shelf. My wife would not want me to get that, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. She doesn't edit anymore, so we don't <laughs> have to worry about it. True. 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 <laughs> So that's kind of it for the segment. Um, it's the new year. I think is this our official first episode of the no, new No, we did a game uh, episode on the second. Okay, so that one did drop in the no new days, year. No days off. Well, this is our first one recording in the new year. So yes. happy new year. Um happy new year. I just kind of want to talk about the last year and just some of the games we kind of played and just kind of get your idea. Um, what was your what was your standout game? From the last year, the last games we kind of played, or games we haven't covered on the show, maybe? We played a lot last year, uh, especially Blockbuster Summer. You know, we were banging out some IP-themed games every other week. Um, But the one, looking back at the episodes that we did and the games we played, obviously Dice Throne is there. Um, Mm. We talk about Dice Throne all the time, so I want to highlight something else. Spirit of the Wild. Um, Okay. That was probably the biggest surprise for me. Um, because it's just such a small game, but I love that game so much. I had so much fun playing with you. Uh, it's a game that you can play. You can easily chit chat, see what else is going on, um, and still be fully immersed in the game and enjoying and knowing what you're doing. And yeah. I think that's probably my favorite. Um, second favorite Hogwarts battle, probably. Okay. Well, but, uh, dice thrown out the window. Spirits of the Wild, 100 percent for sure. That's one surprised me big time. Yeah, and that kind of surprised uh, me. I, that's your choice. I. Yeah, I love that, that game. That is a fantastic game. It's a shame that it's out of print. Um, yeah, I know. That I can't gift it to you since you love it so much. But <laughs> now, Spears of the Wild from Mattel Games was just what a buy for my wife. Like, not yeah. a gamer, just, oh, I like the art. And it was 15 bucks, yeah. I think. And she just bought it. And, like, I, we came home and I'm like, this game is fantastic. 
Shout like out if, Meg. Yeah, if I if I knew what have known, I would have bought eight copies and just <laughs> held on them, sold them on eBay. <laughs> um, how about you? So I think yeah, the biggest game that we kind of discovered was definitely Dice Throne, but it wasn't. It's not my favorite game because it's basically Yahtzee, so it's it's not new, but it's just mm-hmm. a great game. Um, the game that stood out when I really sat down and I was like, what surprised me this year? What did I really enjoy? Uh, the Fast and the Furious game. Oh, that yeah. game that stood out surprise. amongst all the other games. That game, like, I haven't played it. I think I played it maybe once since we like covered it. But like looking back, that was the game that was the most original. It was the game that was most different than any kind of games that we played. It was the game that just was just so had good table presence. It was just fun. Like yeah. just a really fun production. That one was took a while to learn, but I did you know that that was a big surprise. I got that for so cheap. I got that so yeah. cheap. I got it like 12, 12 bucks. That game has so many components, so many elements that go into it that super theme it. Like that's mm-hmm. that's a game that not it doesn't ooze theme. It is gushing theme. Yeah. Um for a franchise that's kind of thoughtless, the game was incredibly thoughtful. Yeah. Um and it, I w- I'm not surprised you picked that because I know we both were, we really gushed over it. Oh mm-hmm. well, yeah, it just, it wasn't even like it's the best game we played all year, but it was just so original and so different than any game we kind of played. Like Jaws was great, but it had elements of other games. And then, like I said, Dice Storm was basically Yahtzee. I was trying to think of some other games, but they all kind of blend together. But like, yeah, that, that game stood out. stood out where it was like, it was just a toy and a game and like just <laughs> we game, had such a good time that game with your friends out. playing it and yeah it, like Shut it up. was it really stood out that game uh stands out too because it just took us forever to learn the game yeah, yeah it was um it, it needed a bit of love to, <laughs> to get it going <laughs> uh no but components were uh, were awesome so yeah i would agree yeah. with funko and prospero hall i think right yep our, yeah. our favorite people yeah so yeah, I think that was my favorite game for sure. So that's kind of it. I mean, anything? Do you have any New Year's resolutions that you'll maybe stick with? <laughs> uh, I'm not a big goals oriented person. Um, however, I have an objective for the year. I would very much like to to get to lose weight. Um, okay. It's just something that I've been kind of, you know, whatever about ho hum, and then it's just you know time for a change. And so, really buckling down on that, especially yeah, after uh, our weekend of. I know, and that's Pizza. why I said to, I said to Audrey, I just got to get through these <laughs> that, that weekend, and we're we're away this weekend. And I said, but you know, it's it's the little things, the little changes. I'm not going to be like I'm going to be drastic, mm. and, you know, lose ten pounds in two weeks. Like you, you got to start small because you, if you want to be realistic, yeah, yeah, and just you know, working on that. How about yourself? Um, I want to read fifty books this year. If you're uh, following our Instagram, I kind of been posting on there some of the books I've read so far. Um, just as a way to keep me motivated, if yeah. I'm putting it out in the universe and I'm reading 50 books, and one yeah. day some listener does go like, "Hey, I read 32," and I'll go, ah. <laughs> yeah. "Um, they're, they're gonna be there on uh January 1st, 24th, trying to yeah. cash that check that you didn't Fail. read 50." I I have a journal that I kind of bought for myself that I'm gonna be writing in to kind of keep myself motivated. It's just something <laughs> I I used to love reading. I I read so much when I was younger and just a lot more carefree and i i just kept telling myself like oh, i'm gonna i don't have time but it's like i do i have so much time like i i just don't give myself that time because i'm always fiddling on my phone or i'm doing other things where i'm like i'm just gonna read at least try to do an hour a day yeah and well, just also reading is hard like not i'm not like the you heard that jokey way <laughs> like i mean in terms of like when you sit down and you watch a movie you play a game mm-hmm there's something that with reading, you have to like super focus. I end up rereading a lot of the same things. And then if you're tired, like it's just tough because your eyes get tired. At the end of the day, you're your doing work. Tired. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. Like, watching a movie is. Uh, it's a little bit easier because you can, you know, you're, you're 
you're, you're just watching. Where yeah. reading, you're you know you're you're more reading, proactive you're in your eyes. You, mm-hmm. I notice with me towards the end of the night, if I read, you know, my eyes just get heavier and heavier, and it's tough, especially if you're sitting cozy. So I view reading as a challenge in mm-hmm. terms of uh, with your leisure time. That um, I love the read. I love to read as well, but it's also you're like ah, I don't want to fall asleep yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, as you said, my wife so, uh, said I couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but now I, yep. I'm going to read a hundred books. <laughs> <laughs> but I was... applaud you. That dude, that's it's tough. It's it's very tough. Well, I said um, to her, I was like, I just want to read like 50 books this year. And in my head, I'm like, that's simple. That's whatever. And she's like, you're never going to do that. That's like four books a month. And I was like, I'll show you a <laughs> hundred <laughs> books. Well, that's what Audrey's in a part of two book clubs. And so she does two books a month. And mm-hmm. even at that, I'm like, how are you? She's like, I don't even think she's like, I she's like 50 books. She's like, I'm, I'm doing 24 if I stick through this. And she's mm. like, that's a lot. So well, 50 as, books is a lot. As of now, I've done two, and I'm halfway through my third. So okay. as that's long good. as I keep this momentum going, I should be okay. Do graphic novels count? Uh, nah. Okay. Keep it in Like, eventually, toward the end, I'll definitely cheat and, like, read a bunch of Goosebump books. Yep. They're, like, 100 hey, pages, a, but I'll be like, still it's counts. It's a book. <laughs> nobody has, nobody said it length that anything. Yeah. So. Length matters. Well, I, I believe in you, bud. Thank you. My wife doesn't. <laughs> what else is new? Yeah, true. What else yeah. is new? Cut that, Nick. <laughs> cut, 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 cut. Um, but anyway, uh, thank you for listening. This episode was just one of our Zoom ones we kind of had to do because we just Love. we didn't get to record that weekend with all the chaos and uh, getting together is just it seems so much harder in the winter time with darkness and. Unfortunately, your Steelers are out. Yep. So maybe yes, we'll have are. more time on Sundays. Heartbreak on Sundays, man. Heartbreak. It was the you know they took care of. They had an opportunity to take care of business earlier in the season. They didn't. That's why they're not playing in the the single elimination tournament, as Mike Tomlin calls it. But, but my uh, my Eagles are. Oh yeah, doing football. Your, I don't know. They're your Packers didn't make it. So yeah, yeah. my yeah my in laws Packers are out. My... But hey, we still got the Sixers. We still got the Phillies coming up. There's plenty of sports. There's plenty I, of. I guess I don't know. There's, there's plenty. No idea. Chudley Cannons. Uh, <laughs> all the out. other all the other sports. Yeah, Chudley but, Cannons. Good pull. All right, Cyrus. Great seeing you. I'm not, glad we survived me. the weekend. Uh, me too. I yeah. uh, no more pizza. No more pizza, pizza in 2023. Yeah. Um, to our listeners, our listeners, and not the cameo. We see you. We see you. Uh, be sure to see us and give us five stars. Uh, write review on iTunes. Um, wherever you can. I know you can review through all of them now. Some of the other ones, I think you can. Yeah, just wherever or not, just or or not, or tell your tell your friends. Tell your tell your parents. Tell your friends. Tell your grandparents. Tell your your teachers tell your librarians mm-hmm. tell your local game store about us just or just keep us to yourself Whatever. or just keep it to yourself yeah. keep it your little secret yeah um just keep listening to us every other week and if you want to support the show red bubble t public all that fun stuff uh yeah. you can get stickers some shirts stickers hats, shirts shoes. our biggest our number one sellers to danny devito all right sir all right we love you all love bye. you bye, bye guys Mwah. bye If I could save time in a bottle The first thing that I'd like to do Is to save every day Till eternity passes away Just to spend them with you If I could make days last forever Words could make wishes come true I'd save every day like a treasure And then again I would spend them with you But there never seems to be no